I've been trying every single overclock in Deep Rock Galactic, one primary and one secondary at a time. Driller's up this week, switching things up with the more support-oriented Cryo Cannon and the unusual EPC. First, we have Crystal Nucleation. This sorta turns the Cryo Cannon into a bootleg Sticky Flames build. Where your stream hits the ground, you create petals with spiky ice that chill and damage enemies based on your freeze power and damage. It reduces your maximum ammo by 20%, but that's easily compensated for by the sheer ammo efficiency of the petals, especially against small targets like Swarmers. It's also good for covering your flank if you don't like using Ice Radiance, and overall it's got all the same strength that Sticky Flames does. If you want to have a Sticky Flames-like build, but also want the freeze utility of the Cryo Cannon, this is a great overclock for you. Next, we have Ice Storm. This overclock penalizes your freeze power, ammo capacity, and pressure drop rate, but in return it doubles your damage and even further boosts it against frozen targets. This effectively makes the Crowd Cannon into a bootleg flamethrower as well. The damage is very good at all the same things, and it even has the same weaknesses of a low effective mag size and a long reload. If you want the freeze of the Crowd Cannon and the power of the flamethrower on the same build, then this is your overclock. Now moving away from the flamethrower-esque overclocks, we have Ice Spear. This increases your repressurization delay, meaning the delay after reaching minimum pressure before you can start firing again, but it gives you the ability to hit the reload key to fire a projectile. This eats up 50 ammo and fully depletes your pressure, meaning you'll be vulnerable for a few seconds after using it, but the damage is immense. It's enough to one-shot a lot of tanky specials and takes a hefty chunk off of everything else, with a guaranteed stun and a very small AoE to boot. It gives Driller a good answer for tougher targets, but you'll want to be prepared to defend yourself while it's repressurizing. Snowball is a very similar overclock. It even has the same repressurization penalty. This one's an unstable though, and it comes with an extra ammo penalty on top of that. The projectile this overclock shoots doesn't deal damage, but it applies a massive amount of freeze in a small area. This one only eats 25 ammo per shot, making it a quick and ammo efficient way to ice groups of Mactera or quickly freeze a Praetorian. The blast also applies a hidden debuff that prevents the enemy from warming up for a few seconds, meaning if the blast doesn't immediately freeze the target, you'll still have a chance to get it the rest of the way. Overall, it's a good overclock for freezing problems targets very quickly. Improved Thermal Efficiency is a clean overclock that gives you a small increase to ammo and a small reduction in pressure drop rate. This is effectively the same as an ammo and mag size clean that a lot of weapons have, and it has the same strengths. It's good for making sure you never run out of ice at a bad time. Tuned Cooler gives an increase to freeze power and flow rate, which is effectively fire rate for this gun, while making the weapon regain pressure slower and take longer to spin up. It can be clunky, but if you're good at rationing your tank, which still isn't much of a problem, it makes everything freeze and die a lot faster. It's good for firing in short bursts, but in a pinch, the extra fire rate makes it better at freezing more resilient enemies. Finally, flow rate expansion gives you a big boost to flow rate and a massive boost to pressure gain rate, but makes the pressure drop a lot faster. This one is good for those who like to fire in shorter bursts, and the extra flow rate means you'll freeze and destroy stuff way faster. It's not even hard to avoid hitting zero pressure if you take the pressure drop upgrade in tier 1. Overall, it's great for getting things done faster and keeping the gun pressurized so long as you don't hit zero very often. And now, on to the EPC. We'll start with Overcharge. This gives charge shots a big damage and ammo increase, but makes the gun cool slower and causes charge shots to cost a bit more ammo. This is a great overclock for those who use charge shots frequently as the big bonuses make them extremely deadly. It also pairs very well with Burning Nightmare as the bonuses help compensate for the reduced damage and radius of the shot. With just one charge damage upgrade, the Overcharger overclock can allow Burning Nightmare to instantly one-shot grunts, for whatever that's worth. If you don't use charge shots very much or use thin containment field, then the benefits won't be very useful to you. Magnetic Cooling Unit is a clean that makes the gun shed heat faster and build up heat more slowly while holding a charged shot. This allows you much more time to aim your shots and overall makes spamming the gun a lot easier. If you're the type to use the EPC in short bursts or want to have a lot of time to aim your charge shots, then this is a great overclock to ensure you don't overheat, but if you're more of a fire a shot or two and switch driller, then the different overclock might be more your style. Up next is Heavy Hitter. This gives you a big increase to the damage of uncharged shots, but reduces your ammo and makes your charged shots generate more heat. Plasma Splash might not have been the best tier 5 upgrade to take with this, but for what it's worth, it did make the weapon very good at cleaning up groups of swarmers, although if you're playing Driller, it's unlikely you'll be short on ways to do that. 
Otherwise, it's good for taking care of Mactera quickly, as well as other mid-level targets like guards. It can also be a suitable frozen enemy buster if you really don't like Burning Nightmare. If you'd like to spam uncharged shots, this might not be the best overclock for you, but if you're reserved with your fire a little and generally use the weapon as a backup, it's a great boost to your damage. Persistent Plasma reduces the damage of your charged shots, but causes them to leave a lingering cloud of damaging plasma particles. This field minces swarmers and knocks a lot of the health off of grunts. It lasts a good long while and you get more damage out of the plasma than you sacrifice, if the enemy stays in range for a good amount of time at least. It's great for setting up traps at bottlenecks and generally getting a little more juice out of charged shots when used against larger crowds. Heat Pipe gives you a boost to charge speed and reduces the ammo cost of charged shots, but it makes charged shots generate a lot more heat both when held and when fired. Without the heat shield upgrade in tier 2, you have about half a second to release the charge shot before the gun will overheat, so you'll need to be careful and precise. Any charge shot will instantly overheat the gun as well, but in return you get a quick charge of a very ammo efficient way to take care of crowds. If you like using charge shots a lot, then this is a great overclock for you, but if you run TCF, the extra heat generation will make it very hard to use properly. Overall, it's a good ammo efficiency overclock clock for charge shots. And finally, energy rerouting. This gives a boost to charge speed and a small increase in ammo. This is also a good overclock for those who like to use charge shots semi-frequently, but unlike heat pipe, it doesn't make them harder to use. The small ammo pool increase means that it's also a bit better for a mixed play style of normal and charge shots. And that's all the overclocks for the Crow Cannon and the EPC. Both weapons have a lot of utility and they combo pretty well together.